All right, all right, all right. Hello, everybody, and welcome. We are here with another episode of I Cast Your Freaking Awesome Replays. And of course, today we are casting the games from the I Do What I Want challenge, where players ignored logic, strategy, calculations, and instead decided to just do things at a time, which doesn't normally make sense. So, we wanted to, especially to see units from the early game used in the late game. Things like Reaper harassment in the late game, Tempests rush to in the early game, and just about anything else these players can think of. So, I have no idea what the hell we're going to see. Uh, this was definitely an open call for players to use their creative freedom to do the dumbest strategies they could possibly think of. And that kind of excites me and it kind of scares me, because we might get a new level of stupidity. Or we could get some big brain genius stuff. Sometimes there's a very fine line between those two concepts. Either way, let's introduce the players up here in the top left. In the red, it is Vronsky. Going to be going for a low ground gate here in this Protoss vs Protoss. The opponent in the bottom left is... Vladimir. I can't read that, so we're going to assume that says Vladimir, okay? <laughs> it's the only Russian name I can think of. Um... Ooh, 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 Vladimir comes and does double gas steal. Wait, 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 wait. A pylon block on the expand and a double gas steal. Oh, we've got to go to Vronsky's camera. Vronsky, wait, wait, wait. Vronsky counters with a pylon in the corner of the main. What? A cybercore block as well before even putting his own cybercore down. Well, that makes no sense. He hasn't even started working on the pylon yet. And then recalls the pro room <laughs> gear. <laughs> Scotty, <laughs> Scotty, beam us up. Uh, he gets beamed back home. Gets, he doesn't even have to go to work straight away. He's, everyone's so proud. They're all patting him on the back. Oh, Beavis, you did such a good job. Yeah, we saw you take those gases and block that Nexus. You got him good. Ha <laughs> ha. Meanwhile, Vronsky, I mean, what do you even do as Vronsky now? The probe's kind of running around looking, seeing if there's a follow-up proxy. The Zealot's going to clean this up over the course of like an hour. Vronsky's like, well, it's okay. I'll build a second gateway and a third gateway. <laughs> And I guess I'll just make a lot of zealots because I have no gas and no cybercore. This is an absolute disaster. I think Vronsky's pretty, pretty screwed. I, I, honestly, I think the counterplay that, to this would be to quickly go and take one or two expansions, because otherwise, what is, what is your nexus? Uh, what, what is all your minerals going to? I mean, mass. <laughs> Meth gate zealot. <laughs> uh, I don't even know. If this is the player playing the challenge, because Vronsky does ring a, a bell as a name, so I think Vronsky might be a regular in my channel. So might be the one who sent the replay, but what an absolutely terrible situation. The Zealots are finally going to go into the main to start clearing the castles, but it's going to take so long. Oh, at least if he dropped a third, he could have taken both castles there, and then it could have finished about now and been mining from them now. It's like, what are we starting to cast here? That's only just begun. Oh, only now clearing the assimilators. I feel like something like a double adept pressure would be unstoppable because Vronsky has no mobility at all. But instead of sentries coming out, a stalker, a twilight council, and a stargate. Okay, so whenever you see someone go a twilight council and a stargate at the same time, normally you're looking at some complete nonsense, but I'm gonna keep my mind open. I feel like randomly timed oracles that aren't even that quick are one of the most powerful things in PvP, right? You, you just build some oracles out of here, come in from a, a weird angle at an odd timing, take some probes out in that base. And you know what, Vronsky there? Supply block builds four pylons in one of the most random formations I've ever seen. And finally now tells the zealots to attack the other assimilator rather than just A moving them from one side to the other initially. You can tell we are looking at the peak of StarCraft, advanced mechanical play on both sides. A slightly oversaturated main base. One gas geyser is mining, but only with one worker. You'd think you'd get a move on at this point. A cybercore has not even begun. Oh no, the cybercore doesn't even need gas. Vronsky is so thrown off the build order. It's like, well, it's okay. I'll walk four zealots across the map. A force field goes down and Vlad's like, what the fuck is this? This is what you forced him to do, Vlad. You forced Vronsky to only make zealots. And they're going to try and attack through a choke point. Why did you pull back from the choke? You could have fought in the choke point just one at a time. Oh my god. Vlad is microing his little heart out. Looks like Vlad forgot warp gate for a while as well. Loses one stalker. 
Trying to do some hardcore micro. Uh, could just pull the probes to fight that, but it looks like some hilarious micro from Vlad, to be honest. <laughs> what is this stalker doing? <laughs> All right, okay, two adepts come out. They should make easy work of this. But you can tell the zealots have actually caused a giant distraction. I don't think Vronsky put any micro into this. Meanwhile, <laughs> yeah, yeah, look at this. It's just A-moving zealots across the map. Vronsky's like, well, you've made me do it. Oh my god, they're attacking the rocks. Oh my god, the probes are actually starting to die. The stalk is just chilling behind the mineral line. These adepts are taking damage. One of the adepts dies. Oh my god, this is hilarious. The slow zealot attack. All he needs to do is attack move his probes, clean this up, wall his base off, easiest hold of his lifetime. But right now he's microing his heart out. He's not mining properly. His probes are derping about. The oracles pop, but... Oh no, you can tell here, Vlad is not able to multitask. Get another three zealots walking! Oh my god. You know what? Oh my god, he's accidentally attacked the stalker on the rocks. This stalker has had a panic attack. It's not even helping out. It finally decides to do that again. This zealot up top has killed six probes. He kills the seventh probe. Oh my god, Vlad is falling apart. Literally a handful of zealots have been attack moved across the map. I'm pretty sure Vronsky is not even looking at this. Let's go to Vronsky's camera. Yes, this is Vronsky's camera. He is literally winning the game right now. Watch this unit killed count. Watch this unit killed count. He looks over, he's like, holy shit, are these zealots actually getting in? <laughs> <laughs> Vronsky's just rallying zealots across the map, four at a time. And Vlado on 1800 minerals, 500 gas, still has not figured out. Wall the base off, Vlad! Finally! Finally! Says, you know what? How about I use a wall? <laughs> oh, the oracle's out of juice. The probes are finally going to turn and fight. No, but they're, now they're too cowardly. Oh my god. Oh, this is this is such a disaster. The Adepts warp in there, but they're on move command. They're not on A move. It's absolute chaos here in Vlad's base. We are watching a player literally do the dirtiest thing you can do. He goes double gas steel and pylon plus cybercore blocks the opponent's base. You'd think a player like that would be a little bit more comfortable in an odd or down and dirty situation, yet has kind of pushed the opponent into just making a bunch of shitty unupgraded zealots and has had absolutely no idea how to deal <laughs> with this counter swing. Look at this, it's walling off now, but the wall is so thick, the units can't even reach over it. They've got to go to the high ground just to throw their laser frisbees into the face of these zealots. They do take one out. They've already lost the slime core. Another zealot does fall, but those gateways on the top are inaccessible. And this is actually doing damage right now. Meanwhile, Vronsky's like, I guess I should macro up. Takes five more gateways below the natural. Has a third base up. 47 probes versus the 40 of Vlad. And Vlad does finally warp in a bunch of zealots of his own. And it's going to save those gateways. I'm not sure you want to save those gateways. You've kind of got to, you've got to get out of your base. Maybe, what are we going to kill to get out? I wonder. Okay, we're going to kill this gateway here. It's going to take a while. Only two zealots being able to attack that at a time. And this probe here wants to build more production, but not a lot of space to do it. Oracles are going to head out across the map. And oh, it was that random pylon from the early game. Warp gate finishes at the eight minute mark. And Vronsky says, hey, dickhead. He even warps in, not secretly. He warps in over in vision of the units. One adept on the high ground is going to do some damage. The zealots on move command, not really dealing with this. Uh, uh, Vronsky not with the best micro. Please, he's given attack move command, Vronsky. Okay, there we go. Vronsky starts to slaughter the probes. And remember, those zealots have just got back inside their own base. All the probes. Oh my god, another 15 probes just died there. They all tried to move right past the zealots. Half the zealots are attacking the Nexus. Half the stalkers are fighting. Vronsky completely disjointed. But with 13 gateways? What the f***? <laughs> 13 gateways. Raw fighting power. And that turns out to be all you need. Vronsky here wins a game in possibly the stupidest fashion I have ever seen. Wait, 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 wait. It's not over till it's over. It's not over till the flat Vlad sings. And he's not ready to sing just yet. Pulls back to the ramp. Watch that adept stutter step. Not letting those zealots land. It's accidentally panic. He moves the rocks again. Oh, Vlad. Vlad is definitely panicking and spamming clicks. You can see almost double the APM of Vronsky. 130 average to 72 average. And he uses that try-hard APM. He finally has cleaned this up. And you know what? Maybe it's not over, actually. He's got a DT shrine. When behind? Dark shrine. Also a bit of balance wine. Never a bad idea. Two-part plan is always good, in my opinion. Uh, there's no detection. A robo's just started. Vronsky does not know about the DT shrine. Does not have a forge. Does not have a robo. 
this D these DTs, if they just go across the map, they could win the game, but oh no. Oh, you can tell here, Vlad doesn't know how to use control groups. He's just sending them as part of his army. I mean, I guess they'll kill the enemy army, but you want to go for the probe. You want to go for the robo, the detection. You want to go for the economy. He's not doing it. Oh no, Vlad here. Okay, he's going to try and just kill the army and overwhelm front on, but that gives a lot more time for detection to get out. That robo is almost finished. Vlad here. This is his Hail Mary play, but he's afraid. He's panicked. He's, he's, he's unsure. Okay, he says, let's go in there. He moves right up in, blinks his stalkers back. His adepts getting slaughtered. His stalkers are going to need to get out of there. The DTs are doing some big damage. I don't know if Vronsky realized. Let's go to Vronsky's camera. This is Vronsky's, Vronsky's view. He's like, oh, yeah. Seems like I'm winning this fight. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. Seems like I'm winning. Do you think he's noticed? I'm pretty sure he hasn't noticed the invisible units, guys. I'm pretty sure he has no idea... There's Dark Templar killing his army right now. Oh my god, Vronsky! Vronsky! You gotta build some detection, buddy! He's warping in more zealots. He hasn't started. He's building more probes and zealots. He hasn't started cannons. He hasn't started an observer. He has no idea that there's Dark Templar killing his army. Those DTs could have the easiest time killing the Robo, killing the probes, but they're chasing after the army, and it's just not quite as effective. Vlad here is not really probing up behind this either. So Vlad just keeps microing these two stalkers, which is is kind of pointless at this point, you know. Uh, he's not going for the detection. Vronsky still doesn't seem to realize. Let's go to Vronsky's camera. Vronsky is starting plus one attack, charge, plus one armor, and a fourth nexus. Holy shit. Vronsky has no idea that for the last two minutes, there's been four DTs killing his entire army. He starts an observer, a prism, and an observer. But the DTs have found the robo. He's going to lose the robo. I think at this point... Surely, a building disappeared off your screen. You've got to realize something's up, right? Oh, he's trying to put down cannons on top of the TTs. <laughs> Just put them in the other bases. It's like you, you butchered his economy. Just put them in his other bases. Vronsky's like, doop, 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 doop. Build more cannons. Oh my god, the DTs are slaughtering him, dude. All the cannons are dying before they finish. He still hasn't started a cannon in his third or his main base. They're all getting killed. All of his probes, all of his economy, everything is going down. He's still got so much money. If his zealots went across the map, maybe he wins a base trade. I don't know, but he's got to get out here, man. He's running everything to his fourth base. Vronsky here. Uh, sleeping at the helm a little bit. is going to send probes from his main to the third. Every other probe has gone to the fourth. He still has no detection on the way. His robo, he's just throwing that on a control group. Control group three. Vronsky wants to build an observer. Start a cannon. Oh my god, okay. He's going to start one there. Please get cannons up at the fourth. The fourth is where all of his probes are. Dude, his probe count is dying right now. Look at that. 40 probes are being killed by Vlad. Uh, catching up on the 48 that were killed earlier, of course, by Vronsky. He's going to try and put a cannon down here, but it's with a probe from... He keeps using shift, so they're trying to mine minerals before they put the cannons down. Finally, one cannon goes down, but that's going to die immediately once again. Oh, I think some cannons are going to get up in the third and the natural, but the robo does go down in the main. Vronsky here, crisis management of an absolute beast. Let's go back to everyone's camera. So Vlad there has focused that down. Vlad's also taken a hidden expand in the corner in case this becomes a base trade. He finds these cannons on the third. The natural two cannons are up. So those are alive and those could cause a problem. But the third is exposed. Now there is a cannon on the fourth that looks like it'll finish. Vronsky thankfully had so much money to spare. But I cannot believe that Vronsky has let this one slip away. Oh my god. He was so far in the lead. And it's looking like a relatively even game right now. If only Vlad was actually holding down the probe key this whole time off his next side. Does he even have a Nexus control? He does. He's got money. If he just held down like 10 probes at a time, he could be up at like 30, 40 probes. But he's so focused on the DDs and oh no, he's about to get a nasty surprise. He walks into the cannon. Oh, you don't want to lose a DT. One DT does go down. Now that DT should win that fight. Does it? Yes, it does. So it does get rid of the detection on that base. That base, of course, doesn't have detection. He's depowered a lot of the stuff in the main. Um, the natural is really where these probes should be mining from. These cannons got up on the natural. He, sh he should be there. And now he's trying to creep cannons to his other base. Just build a robo here. Why? Oh, he's building a robo over there. Okay. I mean, I, I guess. I guess. No production for Vlad. Okay, we've got to go to Vlad's camera. Vlad has just gone to his base and queued up four probes and set a rally point and is building an immortal. Oh my god. He was on like 10 probes when he first went over with the DTs five minutes ago. He could have built a huge economy by now. He now starts some probes on the third. He's checking his DTs. He's like, yeah, I think I'm winning. But knowing about those cannons. Ooh, get out of there. Get out of there. He runs the DT up, runs it away. 
Okay, he's gonna try and run it around. He's gonna run that DT around. I mean, as long as he, he gets rid of that pylon and this nexus in the main, I think he's okay. What's he going for? Oh, he's going for the forges because that allows cannons to be built. But there's no way you can get in there, mate. You can see two cannons on your screen. There's no way you can get in there. Okay, he scrolls back home. Oh my God. He starts a warp prism. Oh, is he going to try and sneak DTs around there? <gasps> There's an observer out. Oh no, the DT getting hunted down by a charge lot there. He does get his DT buddy to come and help. And now that means I think a DT should be a zealot if you just stand and fight. Ah, oh, but two verse one, two verse one. Let's go back to everyone's camera. That DT goes down. He F2'd. He F2'd. He pulled the other DT into the cannon up here at the main as well. Oh my god, the only thing going for him is that Vronsky still has not sent probes back, even though he's had detection up for ages. He finally remembers about these probes and sends them home. But this means there is a 30 probe economy advantage for Vlad, who's got a warp prism, an observer of his own, a single random immortal, a couple more DTs warping in. Vlad here has got a bit of gas mining. He's mining four gas guys. He's got a ton of gas mining. He doesn't have much minerals. So he's got three workers up there, nine on the natural and 11 on the main, but only really getting super efficient usage out of eight of those. So we've got a DT, a Stalker, an Immortal, and a Warp Prism. Vlad is not done with his cheeky bullshit. I think he's going to go across the map again. There's still probes just kind of scattered all over the place. Vronsky, of course, trying to recover here. But Vronsky also not probing up after the chaos. I think both players' hearts we're beating about a thousand beats a minute and they're finally slowing down at this point and going okay i guess i could breathe but uh not for long because check it out guys that detection it only covers the mineral line just barely and the cannons can't actually shoot there well prism drop in the back there's nothing mobile that shoots up for vronsky and this is his probes he's got to get him out of there man vronsky such a slow reaction your base is under assault this is your entire economy wait 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 his first reaction is to try to build a cannon underneath it not to run his probes away Oh! oh. <laughs> well, the DTs decide to run into the cannons. Not a great idea from Vlad. Does lose two or three of his DTs. Oh, picks up the DTs. The Immortal's actually doing pretty well. I think he can win this fight. He drops the DTs, but he gets them surrounded. Oh, oh, bad micro here by Vlad. If he drops all of them in a line, but he keeps letting them get in uh, one at a time, that probe up in the top will beat the Stalker. The Immortal gets picked up and saved. So good micro here. I think that Vlad has got this game. Oh my god, what an absolute shit show from both sides. What an absolute shit show. God damn, this was a cheesy game on all sides, says Vronsky. This was awesome. Oh, and they even say, yeah, GG. No one's telling each other to get cancer or nothing. This is awesome. That's a wholesome, wholesome, uh, wholesome diet. Wholesome diet for today. What a beautiful game, <laughs> A glorious shit show. All right, all right, all right. Here we go with game two. And up in the top right in the red, it's Mimic. Down here in the bottom left, representing Sane Sanes. It's Jao Baba. Of course, I actually forgot to mention, guys, we have an upcoming challenge. For Icy Far, we always announce one. We forgot to do it at the start of the video in game one. The challenge coming up is zero cardio. That's right. We want people to be going all out hard. And if their opponent's got enough durability, can weather the storm, well, they should deservedly get a victory, shouldn't they? So you know what? You're not allowed to have more than 30 workers. That's right. <laughs> so you better pick up the pace, get the action going hard, because there's no way you're going to be staying in that game for too long. Uh, I had a lot of fun playing a, a 30 worker challenge just the other day as well. I had some really close games. Couldn't quite seal the deal against my Grandmaster opponents with it, but uh, definitely had a, a couple of real exciting games. So good luck with that one. And uh, try to get in there hard and fast and figure out what you can do with just 30 workers. Layers of uh, ridiculously cheesy aggressive stuff. But, you know, having really quick tech switches within it if you want to create layers rather than it just being a, a simple all-in. People often think, well, if you can't go past 30 workers, it's just one attack and it works or it doesn't. But if you actually plan ahead to always have a next cheeky bullshit step, You'd be surprised how how long into a game you can go. Um, it really is it really is super duper cool. So 
try it out. Try some uh, different different builds, different patterns. Uh, get some uh, get some tech switches. You know, try to try to shepherd your opponent one way, go another way, and just try to keep getting that damage done non-stop. It's gonna be a Reaper expand here for Jababa and a very quick second gas. Interestingly, but even before factory. Up in the top right, and the red mimic is just kind of uh, chilling with a pretty standard hatch gas pool. He's going six lings, which is a few more than normal, but not making ling speed. A drone comes out for a moment, but then goes back. Interesting. Not sure if he's worried about a proxy rax or something else there. Oh, two lings trying to sneak out. Okay. But they're just going to fight that Reaper. Reaper's standing its ground. Reaper. Ooh, it's got a micro, dude. I mean, getting a few ling kills is great. It's a bit of a gift from mimic, but... Do not want to lose that Reaper. Ling Long friends do come down. And it looks like Ling Speed has started up. But still mining with three. I think we've got a two base Muta build on our hands. Looks like a two base Muta. Could be a few other things. These Lings are actually going to sneak on across the map. And Marines are building two at a time behind this. So it was Reaper straight into Reactor. There was no Marine built, but... It looks like this is ready to swap over just from the placement. That's two factories, in fact. It's two factories, in fact. Two fact fact. Uh, that's actually interesting. So I wonder if it's just going to be a Cyclone Hellion. Like, just try to start getting momentum up on two base. Or will we just see straight to, like, Blue Flame Hellions? Or maybe even Siege Tanks. Zergling's coming on in. Ooh, quick response, though. And there are two Marines, which... Oh, I would raise that deeper... He's going to sacrifice the SCV anyway. And those Marines will be able to clean that up. Oh, oh, no micro. No micro. The Ling wins that fight if you don't micro that Marine, man. Yep. <laughs> that Marine does go down. Reaper comes in at the last second. It's all right. Four Lings going down. But more importantly, uh, Mimic actually sees that it's two factory. So against a two factory build, it's really important to get into Roaches usually as quickly as possible. Or to get like Muters or something to, to stop the Hellions and so on from doing damage. Mimic those thoughts a melee upgrade, and now an infestation pit. Wow. Well, you can you 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 can't do that. What what, what? Well, I uh, remember guys the challenge for this week was I do what I want, and that apparently is what Mimic's doing right now, because I have no idea what this is supposed to be. Is it two base knight is swarm host? With, like, extra queens, but that you've also got melee zerglings for run buys or something? <laughs> I don't know. It's, it's a bizarre build. The drone count has, is really low. It's been a bit of a problem for Mimic. Like, you didn't really take any damage, but it just feels like Mimic's start has been super slow. So, uh, I think Mimic's going to have to do well with the... Ta I do like that the drone's heading out now. It looks like he's going to go take the triangular third base here. But a fusion core on the way on the other side. Interesting. Wait, what the fuck is this? Mass Widow Mine? Oh, Jao Barber's build is crazy. It's trying to support BC production and four mines at a time. For those who don't know, a reacted factory builds units insanely fast. You can dump so much of your resources into one of these bad boys. Having two of these, that is like the biggest mineral dump ever. So I got to say, it's actually kind of smart to get the third command center before you start producing. Let yourself get a little supply block there. Because if you don't, once you hit the Widow Mine production, you're never going to get enough money for that third command center. I don't even know when you're going to get money for a battle cruiser. I feel like we've got to pause production to even do that. But it's going to be mass battle cruiser Widow Mine. So a super weird start up against Mimics rushing for Hive. Wait, what just came in? Oh, what just that? Was that? Oh, is that Widow Mine drop just came in? Oh, sorry, guys. I just missed that. I'll come back and show you that in the replay at the end of this game. Uh, looks like nine workers went down there, but a full medevac went down with Widow Mines as well. Did it see the hive? Because that's that would be weird. Yeah, he sees a hive! He sees a hive! Dude, seeing a hive that started at five minutes into the game, you got to be freaking out. But wait, wait, wait. Now Mimic's like, now nah, I'm taking four bases. What? That just means you don't have any defense. But fortunately, is facing a Terran who is just going for, like, one of these annoying map control snarls. He's just going to put Widow Mines everywhere. These Widow Mines are going to start to pepper these overlords. It takes two to kill one, though. And the Lings come forward. Hey, taking out one of those. And the other one does go down. As it fires, it reveals itself. So the Zergling hit it just before the Zergling died to it. 
Uh, we don't mind setup to deny bases to be nice and annoying. So we're going to see Battle Cruiser Widow Mine on mass up against really fast Ultralisks. This is one of those rare things, dude. This is like, I I don't even know. This is like, just fucking, I don't know. You you're drunk. You stumble out of the club, and and you're like, whoa, you're in a fucking alleyway. There's fucking dudes fighting. You're like, this is scary. You know, normally your instincts would say, get the fuck out of here. This is dangerous. You know, it's at night. You've been drinking. They've clearly been drinking. Dudes want to fight each other. There's some macho shit going on. You, you normally freak out, but then there's this little something, and it says, wait a second, this isn't just a normal bunch of chads trying to beat the shit out of each other. So you look closer, a bit of moonlight glints off the faces, you realize it's Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos arguing about who has the bigger space rocket. And I mean, I think we know what they're really arguing about, but you know, they're both there and they're like, no, you, you got shitty rockets. Like, My rockets were better, Elon's there. He's like, I did it first. That's the sort of rare thing. Witnessing a fist fight between those two is about as unique a treat as what we're about to see. Because what the fuck is this? Battle Cruiser Widow Mine versus this. Ah, oh, the queens have so much energy, but they don't transfuse. Mimic, don't noob it, mate. Don't noob it. You've got this. Your queens can hold off the first few BCs. Then your ultras can go tank 36 Widow Mines to the face. <laughs> the spore moves over and siege is up. I think in this scenario, this truly is the first space rocket. So I think Elon is Jao Baba and Jeff Bezos is uh, is uh, as Mimic here. So, I mean, the thing is, I think Elon may have gotten to the skies first with the big funny units with the Widow Mine drop coming in the battle cruisers. But look at this. Look at this. Bezos says, no, nah, motherfucker. Comes in here with a big old space cow, starts chopping on these SCVs, takes a ton of Widow Mine shots to go down. Oh, but Musk answers there with a few of his uh, his Widow memes as well. Oh, my God. I don't know, dude. This is this is actually kind of funny because if, if the lings go through and spread out, all the Widow Mine shots are like pretty ineffective. And the Ultras can just clear through. There's nothing to kill Ultras here other than Widow Mines. That being said, another Battle Cruiser comes in, does find a fringe base. These two Widow Mines dying bases are uh, mining on that one. The Ultras coming in. Oh, these Widow Mines. That Ultra's getting low. Okay, that Red Point Ultra should be blasted with just one more shot. And it does go down. But Ling's coming in as well. Uh-oh. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, there's an, are there any Overseers? There's no Overseers. Why do we not have Overseers, Mimic? A single Overseer would allow you to kill all these Widow Mines. Does take out the third. Wait, 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 wait. The third didn't lift. Oh, my God. Elon, I think his ego's getting a little bit too, too, too sissy here. He's feeling a little upset. Um, Bezos is, is putting him in trouble here. Coming in. He's stolen his idea. He's gone for an even fucking more powerful and, and devious strategy than he has. The Space Cow Zergling. And these Widow Mines dying before they can burrow. They do not have drilling claws. All the SCVs going. Oh, dude, if he only had a wall off and he could and he could just get behind a wall off. Battle Cruisers will cleave through everything eventually. Problem is, remember that kindness plating did get done. Oh, okay, that's finally going to raise is the wall. But already, I think the damage might have been done. 27 SCVs have been killed versus 17 drones. The Widow Mine splash as well as the Yamato takes that out. But Ling's still trickle on into the main. These Widow Mines still firing on the eggs on that base. Spinecrawler will finally build there. As uh, these two mad lads just battling each other. Another Yamato goes down. Space Cows are taking a bit of a beating. But four armor up against uh, air to surface. Eight damage a shot. So it's only... It's going down to four damage a shot after armor. There was some carapace upgrades. That would be even worse. There's a Spire transition underway. Bezos is just using those extra funds. I think he's shorted the, the stocks here on uh, on uh, on Terran X. Uh, and Terran X is running out of money right now, dude. People are losing faith. They're like, okay, yes, these battle cruisers look cool, but they're not getting the job done as efficiently as you said. You said if the Zerg things couldn't shoot up, you'd be able to deal with this. But but we're seeing a factory floor in chaos. <gasps> whoa, whoa, whoa. Where'd all the SCVs go? Wait, 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 wait. Those Zerglings in the main never got dealt with. There's only three SCVs left in the main. Oh, no. Oh, god damn. I think he's been, been absolutely destroyed. I think our Elon Terran here is in trouble. I thought his composition was a little better, to be honest. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, shit. Oh, no. Mimic swapping into roaches. That's like, that's, 
just slower and worse against these units. I think Lings and Ultras are way better. Corruptors are going to be good, but will there be enough, man? Like, six Corruptors. Bezos may have blown his bank on the wrong units. He's got more money coming in, but he's going to need to keep taking gases on these bases, which you can see he's spending all of his money on spores right now. Maybe a little afraid of losing his lead. There are still four command centers up. Despite not lifting some, three of which are orbitals. Oh man, I, I feel like Jao Baba, if, if Jao Baba Musk here can actually just get some more depots up, get out of the supply block and keep building, might be okay, but ah, oh, just when you start your buildings, let the space car comes in. Isn't that just the way? Once again, comes in, he says, I can offer you better salaries, depot builders, come work for me. Please lift it off, please. Jao Baba does not know how to lift command centers, I fucking swear. Yamato, though, that's what I said. Six, seven corruptors ain't gonna cut it, man. Dude, that's five battle cruisers. Five battle cruisers are mincing this army. His economy might be absolutely dicked, but ooh, Elon there just showing what can be done with raw ingenuity and uh, and inspiring the will of the the battle cruisers to stand their ground and fight. Mimic's still rallying across the map, and oh my god, I think that might be the first Overseer of the game that's being made. I mean, somehow 25 Widow Mines have died, but I feel like it could have been about a thousand times more if there was an Overseer in each one of these battles. Uh, Mimic is now, uh, Mimic Bezos, of course, up here in the top, is now putting on gas on the third, but, but probably needs it on the fourth as well, and, and desperately needs to build some more drones to actually take advantage of this lead. But it feels like Mimic is kind of shitting the bed. I mean, I mean, let's be real, Mimic here playing a very uncharacteristic style just like i'm gonna go for hive on two base <laughs> and jao baba did the same thing jao baba was like oh yeah how about with their mind from battle cruisers on two base <laughs> it's like fucking real weird shit you know it's just like sometimes you're used to seeing things and then you you just start to expect people to kind of apply some sort of logic in their games these two players i think are much more about the style points they're much more about asserting that their space rocket is the largest, the most efficient, and delivers the largest payload to their enemies. Oh, that Widow Mine might get a nice shot off. Hey, not bad. Another command center goes down, but it's it's more about rebuilding your SCV count and putting guys back on gases, I think, for Jao Barber right now. You could tell both players have some fun little harassment tactics. I'm not too sure about the macro fundamentals of either player with this build. Now, either it's because they're playing absolute whack shit where they're not sure what they should focus on while doing insane stuff, or it's because, uh oh, that's a lot of corruptors. He's got to get out. Oh my God, he just blasts five of those corruptors, but there's not a lot of anti-air to rely on. Now, if the roaches and ultras can take out the widow mine shots, the corruptors can come in and just win the game. Master repair maybe could help out. There's six BCs. There's six BCs right now. He's got a mass repair. He's got a mass repair. Ciao, Barber. These BCs are your lifeline, mate. They're your lifeline. Oh, he loses the BC to Stella Jamato. Where's the mass repair? Why is he not hiding behind the Widow Mines? Okay, he got one big Widow Mine shot on the Corruptors. He takes out the Overseer, funnily enough. He target fires it, but he's not target firing all these red hit point Corruptors. I feel like Ciao, Barber could maybe have won this fight. Musk, you've got to micromanage. <laughs> I thought you were famous for this shit. <laughs> Tell those battle cruisers if they don't target those Reddit point corruptors, they don't have a fucking job to come home to. No! Ah! Okay, the planetary does clean up the whole ground army. All the battle cruisers die a little unnecessarily, in my opinion. That one overseer does survive. I love that a second overseer came in. But right now, I mean, unit count, these roaches are just gonna, gonna cause big problems for Jao Baba Musk. And Mimic Bezos here. Oh, he says, this is what I think about you, you piece of shit. You piece of shit. Oh, you're number one. You're number one fucking rich man in the world. Yeah. Oh, you think you're you think you're big with your companies that don't even fucking make money? I'm the original guy who doesn't make money with my companies. I'm the fucking original. How dare you take my number one spot, you piece of shit. Elon's there like, dude, dude, I can repair your stupid piss for days. Get out of here, you disrespectful bastard. Take your Amazon water and your fucking weird free shipping stuff. Get out of here. Bezos at this point, he's looking a little frantic. He's going for Ravages, which technically can be very good for sniping Widow Mines from afar. But just as often, we see players kind of fumble it and walk those Ravages into the Widow Mines. Oh, Corruptor's coming forward. Round two of pissing on Elon's planetary, but he sees the Widow Mines. And oh, some that's what I'm talking about. Panic Biles, man. He just biled there when he could see the Widow Mines. They weren't even burrowed him. They were in plain sight. Uh, Mimic realizing at this point that he does actually have 
the superior range unit in the Ravager. But uh, you know what? This is given time. Time to rebuild. And it's going to be Banshees. He's going to go for a more mobile unit. Just to deal with the ground, I guess. It's a cheaper unit as well. These bases are up, though. That bottom right base is up. It is misplaced, but that's not the end of the world. These rally points have really got to... Got to these, these units have got to stop rallying out to their death. Ooh! Ooh! Oh, damn! Damn! Ah, uh, that's, a, that's a security system you got to worry about there. He's just going to try and take the missile turret shots on the face. Ravager's coming and take out those, though. Uh-oh. Oh, the Ravager's going to take one. Another Corruptor goes down to that. BC, get out of there, BC. Oh, no! No! Oh, Musk was not happy about losing that base. And now Jao Baba Musk is in huge trouble. Ah, those Banshees run out and die as well. It was like, oh, no. He's still got extra bases. So I kind of still believe he has hope, but he can't keep throwing those BCs away, man. That, oh, That's the, the big point. When you lose all your battle cruisers, it feels like... The linchpin of your army just kind of kind of crumbles. Uh, that being said, Mimic doesn't have a crazy work account, you know? Uh, Mimic's making roaches and queens, which aren't super efficient units either. Ooh, oh, round two of insulting piss attack. Oh, man. It's going to come forward. I think we need to mass repair this. Needs to mass repair this. Oh, no, he doesn't repair in time. That's a huge mistake. Okay, the SCVs are getting out of there. Now, he's rebuilt a sick SCV count. If he could just get a few cyclones even would be amazing, right? There's just not that much on the ground. The Widow Mines are going to try and burrow underneath, but I think this is just way too costly. Like, even if you get some big booms, which which do happen, you've got nothing to finish it off. So these these are very wasteful attacks from Jao Barber. And at what, at what were you defending by running in there? Ah, he could have waited for the Zerg to attack him. Where these units, whenever they attack, notice they all clump up a bit. Uh, yes, obviously they can spread like that, but even, even there, this is buying time. Jabab has got to pull back, and I, I think really should swap back into the battle cruisers. You know, you've got to keep forcing that corruptor production out, and probably should be trying to get fa more factories, some cyclones, tank stores, anything like that. I mean, building banshees versus mass corruptor, not really the way. Mimic being just a bit too smart with the ravages. And the ultralisk rush actually works out. I promised you guys I would look back at that widow mine drop. Uh, it's probably about six minutes, I think. So let me just double check that one. I think this was just after that point. I pressed back, which normally rewinds a few seconds. It rewound two whole minutes. So here we go. Here's that first Widow Mine drop. And then I also want to show you guys, I think it was two Zergans in the main that killed every worker. So three Widow Mines came in and, oh, ooh, not bad, but does lose the meta back. All three mines and the medevac go down. Now, the next one, I think, was about 12 minutes. And this was absolutely insane. Because I, I, I think everyone, once you've played enough StarCraft games, has experienced this. It's where you think you've held. And you just don't look in your main. And watch these two Zergings. Let's fast forward this. Oh, my God. I didn't even look at it because I just assumed he was going to just attack move them with his workers at some point. But there was, like, ultras rallying in the front and stuff, distracting him. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. What a depressing way to lose a game. <laughs> oh my god, there's two links. Just before the BC kills, the one has 10 kills and one has 17 kills. That is a 27 kill Zergling duo. Amazing gaming. All right, all right, all right. It's game number three of the I do what I want challenge. And it looks like this one's actually been submitted by down here in the bottom right in the blue, representing clan You Suck. It's Freddy. The opponent in the top left. And he's like, what? Okay. It's Kairos. Isn't there a Kairos junction? Is Kairos something from the lore? It's a planet, maybe? Kairos. Don't actually know what that is from the StarCraft lore, but it's going to be a Zerg versus Zerg match. Now, Kairos has gone Overlord into 14 pool 13 gas. So I think Kairos, after hearing the weird chatter at the start, has freaked out a little bit because the early Overlord, sign of a macro game, sign of get building up for the long game. But the early pool and gas, usually a sign of a rush if you're getting it on those supply counts. So I think Kairos is just a little afraid that there's going to be something very cheeky coming. And indeed, if we look at the minimap. Oh, no. Are you going to take the... 
Freddy is going to take Kairos's rich gas base in the middle of the map. Which normally would be very likely to be spotted straight away, but Kairos not sending the overlords across the map. My god. I think Kairos panicked and accidentally gave them both stop commands because they look like they'd been told to move across the map. One down and one to the right. But now they're just sitting there. And that means there's going to be no vision. What, what you're meant to do is go straight across the map and see what's going on. Now, Freddy here is sending another drone down around... Where does this attack move end? And then into the enemy's main. Okay, that's that's an odd one. And Freddy here is getting a second... Wait, 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 what? Why are we getting two gases up here if we're taking a rich gas? There's no way you could use these two and the rich gas, right? It's like, fastest mutilist of all time. <laughs> what is this going to be? This is going to be some dumb shit. Remember, it's the I do what I want challenge. It's about doing things that defy logic. We're already taking a rich gas in the middle of the base. And Zerg vs. Zerg is about as obscene and ridiculous a thing as you could choose to do. Now, this drone comes in. Remember, he has an attack command. It sees the queen and says, okay, let's, let's F right off. Now, Kairos has not taken expand. So Kairos seems to be a little bit... What is this? There's an overlord ring around the main. Start sling speed, start some things, but 600 minerals. I think Kairos, literally the in-game chatter, I'm pretty sure has tilted him off the face of the earth already. And a lair goes up at the proxy, no less. Not even here. Okay, so some drones are going to pull across now to get over there. I think this is going to be like super fast muters. A spine builds in the main. Wait, two spines in the main. We're just hoping this don't, doesn't get spotted. Oh my god. The stars really have to align for this story. And a spore. What is the spore for? <laughs> it's a 2 minute 50 spore in Zerg vs Zerg. Like, in case he flies an overlord in? Oh, this is a truly, truly bizarre game. Meanwhile, Kairos here is massing lings. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, this is... This is weird, because the players clearly know how to build things, but their build orders are like... are like Silver League, if even. But the mechanics on the APM looks a little bit more like Platinum. I'm very confused. <laughs> Why are we... Ex okay, so we're, we're doing a Ling Rush, but Ling Speed wasn't even finished, and there's going to be two spines. Oh my god. Was there any worse thing to do a big Ling attack into? So it's going to be 18 Zerglings, but it's going to be quite a slow and delayed attack. Okay, so I think it's a Ling attack into your own tech. And the infestation bit goes down. It's not even going to be muted. Is it going to be infestors? Because that truly would play to the challenge. Going just infestors and Zerg versus Zerg is about a nutty thing as you could possibly do. Comes in with the Zergling, sees two tentacles and a queen. The queen says, come and fight, dickheads. The Zerglings, though, apparently some of their more educated kind are like, uh, probably not a good idea. They're going to back off. They saw no lair, though. They see no natural, they see no third. Surely some alarm bells have got to go off for Kairos here, saying, wait a second, you couldn't be on one base this long. That doesn't make any sense. You can see the lings are like, hey, what? What is this? They're, they're very confused, but uh, alarm bells aren't ringing just yet. Wait, swarm host from here? As like a launching pad? I don't know, a spy is on the way. That's going to be pretty good versus anything here. Another spine and an Evo goes down to create like a little semi wall there. Uh, Freddy continuing to drone actually has the economic advantage. Kairos expansion finally does finish here. And those muters are going to be pretty powerful. If Kairos just goes down, takes the gases on the natural, that should be fine. The Ling's still headbutting. Oh, oh, the Ling's. Oh, they've had enough of being patient. They're going to go after the queen. She shouted too many insults at them. The drones come over to try and help in the fight. But uh, those Zerglings do get pushed back. Nine Zerglings through a queen. I think I think Freddy's totally fine with that, to be honest. Six Swarbos build. Yes! So Freddy's dropping ejects and building Swarbos through this base. Unfortunately, when the muters are out, this is going to be a friggin' absolute mess, though. There's nothing that shoots up, but Kairos is not expanding or macroing behind. Freddy says once again, I do what I want! And you know what? Kairos is like, I, I support that. That's, that's totally fine. Perhaps not realizing that he might have just said it's okay and, and, and kind of give a tac given tacit approval to the drive-by baby flinging that is about to happen. Freddy here, a sad, sad story of teenage pregnancy, went to the wrong side of the map, the wrong side of the romanticide tracks, and, uh, you know, it's 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 a sad story here. And uh, some people would, would, would argue about pro-life or this or that, you know, rights of the woman. 
Unfortunately, in this case, though, Freddy is a Zerg player. So there, there's only really one thing that happens with a teen pregnancy on the wrong side of the map here in Zerg versus Zerg. And that is you take the baby and you throw it at your opponent's face. Or in this case, all nine pairs of babies. Unfortunately, that was not a good angle because they're going to instantly land on the third. Not the best target, but hey, the Zergs come in and get blitzed. And those Locusts could still maybe get towards the natural. They'll get the Queen. Kairos just going for it. Kairos is taking out two Swarm Hosts. Three Swarm Hosts, I believe, have already gone down. Where are the Spore Crawlers? Freddy is trying to make Burrow. But when you start making Burrow at this moment, I think it's a little too late. There are a few more Swarm Hosts there, though. These Locusts getting in could do damage. Kairos is still effectively on one base mining. And Kairos is about to realize what the heck has gone on. These muters come in. They're going to focus down the queen, but I don't think they can get rid of these spores. They could maybe take one out, but those spores are going to finish. It's going to take for the drones. Oh, good targeting on the drones. But then the spore finishes. You've got to get out of there, Kairos. Oh, he's going to fight a spore crawler. Oh, 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 oh. If someone walks into your house with a gun, do you, do you pick up a knife from the kitchen the kitchen block and, and go, go try and stab? No! Kairos finally realizing that wasn't the best idea after sustaining severe gun wounds to the torso of his mutilist flock. Does come back to defend these locusts. And that hatchery getting very low. Oh, is it going to go down? I think it might go down. Oh my god, it does. Kairos knocked back to one base, but obliterating the swarm host count. Nine have gone down. Ten. Oh, oh, wait, wait, wait. Burrow finish. Come on, burrow the ball. Freddy doesn't have the ball of hockey, so Freddy's... Oh, some of them are still dying. And Freddy, running another swarm host in the natural, says... Eat me babies, dickhead! Throws another locust. And uh, the muters are gonna come in here. The zerglings defend the zerglings. Kairos tries to take out that spore crawler. I mean, that's not the worst. It does take control over part of the mineral line there. But locusts in the main go in and that queen goes down. And you know what? You really need to make an overseer right now. Is this gonna be the second game from this week's Icy Far? where a player doesn't know about detection and stuff. Oh my god. It was DTs in game one, and now it's the Burrow in game three. Oh my god, look at this. Slow Zerglings in the mineral light are going to tear it up. Kairos is trying to get back there, but the Muters are fighting the Swarmos. They need to be killing the Zerglings right now. The drones turn to fight, but once those Locusts join the battle, oh no. Drones need to run. Drones need to run. You do not want to stand your ground against Locusts. Oh, thankfully the Muters are there. The Muters do cover them. Ah, uh, Kairos? Kairos? You know there's Swarm Host there. Oh, Kairos doesn't know about Overseers. Oh! <laughs> oh my god. I think maybe, maybe he does, but maybe the stress of the game's a little bit too much, you know? Uh, Freddy should have built those drones behind the Spore Crawler. Could have moved them over when they were done. Those two spores do go down. Freddy does have a lot more minerals, though. And these Swarmos are burrowed inside the main base. I mean, at some point, you've got to realize that they're, they're there and you, that you've got to just morph an Overseer to clear that up. Surely... They unburrow and then burrow again immediately. Literally shows it to him. And it finally ticks over in Kairos's head that yes, those units that just popped out of the ground and then popped back into the ground are indeed invisible for you. And the Overseer is finally morphed. It looks like, okay, we have got a game on our hands. Kairos has double expanded. The natural and the third are finishing up. The muters are now defending. This, this stream of units is doing nothing for Freddy, who's trying to go Ling speed melee range three macro hatcheries and a hive i mean i love that we've seen slow zerglings come in it truly is a i do what i want challenge i mean the zerglings in the natural burrow they do get cleaned up but these ones at the third doing pretty good a single swarm host is gonna burrow up there and start throwing locusts into the main which is just awesome we've got two spores there unfortunately though i mean i love the idea of let's go lots of production but off 10 drones mining on minerals. Nothing mining up here. No more drones building. I think Freddy might be getting a little bit excited. And let's take a look at Freddy's camera. What are we looking at? Okay. Okay. All right. Is realizing that you probably need drones on that base, but doesn't want to send drones there. Is afraid to. Wait, wait, wait. Come on. You're on 16 workers, mate. <laughs> the mute has cleared up those locusts. Will they go find the swarmers? They will. They'll find the zerglings as well. Kairos has, has, stitched, has figured this shit out, man. Kairos with a big brain. Freddy says, I do what I want. Oh, 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 sorry, guys. They weren't macro hatches. They were queen barracks. My, my, my correction. Behind this, Freddy has just started building four queens at a time. That's right. To counter the air units, Freddy has said, I need, I need queens. So I'm going to go queens. Uh, absolute nonsense. 
I mean, there's a lot of minerals that, is, that are out, but those will never get across the map. Freddy's pulling workers off gas, realizing you don't need gas for those and trying to send them. I mean, if Freddy just builds drones on this base, I think he'll get back in the economy because Kairos has shown uh, a real inability to ever really move drones from the main down to the natural. The third, though, getting five workers up on it, and there's still this flock of muters controlling the skies. I feel like, oh my God, there's like a 13 kill mutalist. Holy crap. How often do you see that? I feel like Kairos here might actually be able to win this game, but fighting spores or queens head on will be a losing strategy. And there is a Nidus Swarm coming in. Oh, goes for the snipe on the drones and they burrow. Big brain Freddy. One mutalist dies for that trade. Does fly straight past some overlords though. And check it out, Nidus Swarm up. So we're gonna have four more queens pop out. It's gonna be 10 queens. And there's only 10 muters right now. 10 queens, especially with plus one attack. We'll kick the crap out of that. The muters do fly back for the overlord. The Zerglings find this base. Freddy. Uh, okay. Does a burrow there. The muters will come to clean it up, though. Freddy's going to try and take a top right hatch as well, but only one drone mining on this one. And the minerals are out. Freddy has just spent so much money on things like hatcheries. And oh, the Overseer is so slow. Actually, that Zergling survives. Okay, so the Nidus is going to go up here. There are a lot of queens in that Nidus worm. And they're going to start... This drone is like, oh, sorry. I don't actually have the accessibility ramp ready yet. Let me just open this one up. They've got to take this barricade down. Uh, and these queens... Oh, they're going to try and crack on in. You know what? They don't want this red Zerg player to uh, to continue. There's just... There's too much pedophile mutalisks. And, and they're just out there. And they're trying to get rid of the great leader, Abatha. And these queens and Nidus Worms say no, they've smashed through the barricades and they are walking ever so slowly and ambling their way towards Kairos Hill over here. Okay, Kairos is going to take out a hatch with the Mutalist counterattack, but just built 16 drones after hearing a Nidus Worm. No response except drones. Oh, Kairos. Now, if Kairos runs the drones away, maybe builds spines in the main, there's a way to deal with this. Kairos is going to fly right through the spores. No, not like this. Kairos panic a moves to the natural, not even meaning. He actually meant to come back and fight the queens. That a moves the units accidentally into the spore crawlers. Oh, what an absolute shit show. Kairos's lings run in and get slaughtered by the zerglings as well. Every single mutalist goes down. Possibly the worst engagement of all time. The only units Kairos had on the map. <laughs> and they just get thrown away. Now, Freddy does march back a bit aimlessly. They manage to grab that one queen with the, the buffalo mask or whatever it was. She's going to come over as well. These drones are hiding behind the natural. There's lings and muters. I mean, they're all a little afraid right now. That's a lot of plus one queens. And, uh, oh, where's the transfuse? Look at the transfuse on this front queen. She's not going down. She's not going down. She's surrounded. Oh, the other queens need transfuses as well. This queen dies. One queen falls. Another queen falls. Two queens down. I do what I want. Freddy raining down. Sweet queen justice on Kairos. Kairos is like, dude, what the fuck? <laughs> Um, all right. <laughs> I feel like this is a pretty normal game for Kairos. Just from the way Kairos has played it, I'm like, I don't think Kairos even thinks this is that weird. Kairos is like, yeah, this is how like maybe 30% of my games go. Like, I don't know why this guy keeps chatting. Like, yeah, I do what I want when I play too, man. This looks like a pretty normal standard game of StarCraft. I'm going to fight you with my drones now. The drone zergling queen attack. A roach comes in. Oh my God, are you actually... Is... It's going to be hold. Is it? Oh, extra transfusers barely ticking over. They're out of energy now. Burrowing the low hit point queens. Oh, Freddy. Oh, Freddy. Hot diddly damn. Oh my god. That was that was some very sexy micro. Zerglings do come in to reinforce this. They do have a plus one melee upgrade, which I was wondering about. And I guess we do get to see why that got made so some Zerglings could run into support. 17 drones versus 26 drones. 15 minutes into the game. Let's look at that unit's lost time. Doubly as efficient from Freddy. It turns out Spore Crawler Queen. Pretty good versus Mutalisks. Especially when they fight on into you. And remember that Burrowed Zergling is still spotting down here. So could pop another Knight is there. Oh, wait. Nope. There's no income for Freddy. Literally, Freddy's bank is run completely dry right now. Kairos is very broke as well. I feel like if Kairos got a few more workers there... 
Karis gets like a, like, I don't know, five spines up or something maybe, but Spawning Pool will be going down soon. Overlords have all been dying as well, so Karis only has 15 supply free. Karis does have a Roach Horn, so might try and defend with Roaches, but the whole main base tech is now gone, Spawning Pool included. And it's just a matter of time. I mean, no one likes it when their opponent like spams chat during the game. I, I don't really mind it when someone's being silly, like uh, Slammer. For those who don't know, Slammer is a player who always plays, he's like kind of like low GM Zerg, who always plays in character. 90% of the time his strategy involves taking six bases at the start of the game. And if you start killing some of them, his answer is to just take another six or seven bases. So you'll kill two or three, but then he's on 10 bases and he doesn't care. Um, or some sort of crazy cheesy rush. And the whole time he'll just shout in caps, Slammer is here. Slammer, smash. Slammer's gonna smash you. All caps, never breaks character. Never says, oh, good game, man. I, uh, what could I do better there? We don't know who it is, but I just know they're a weirdo. And every single time they lose the game, they just say all caps, Slammer needs a bigger hammer. And you're always like, what? What does that, what, what does this mean? And he just leaves the game. That's all he ever says. Slammer smash is his good luck have fun. Slammer needs a bigger hammer is his good game equivalency. And uh, I think Freddy's, Freddy's uh, kind of fallen into a, an almost similar vein with the I do what I want wild, wild, offensive burrowed Swarmos into Queen Nidus. The Lings are getting butchered by these roaches. Kairos putting up a good show of it. And if those spines finish, I do think Kairos can hold. Oh, so many Lings coming in. Remember that. Oh, God. Sorry. Bad observing, guys. Just remember that Um, there's not much income behind this for a Freddy. And those spines are going to finish. The drones are being pulled. Kairos waited to this moment to just start microing like an absolute beast. The queens are taking a lot of damage. Transfusers are going down. Oh, if they can get like 10, 15 drone kills though, it is gonna, it is gonna knock Kairos back to the Stone Age. And there we go. The, the, all those worker kills just popped up, up to 75 total. Knocks Kairos down to three drones, two drones, and with more lings coming in as well. A single swarmos. That one guy from earlier throws some of those locusts down. And with more Lings coming in as well, I think, remember their plus one melee should be just enough to overwhelm these Spines. Spines doing what they can. One of them with 10 kills, the other gets up to four. A few more Roaches are going to pop out, but those are the last units of Kairos. Freddy, uh, definitely trying to rub salt in the wound now. Says, any chance you want to leave, says Kairos. Oh, oh, he's trying to get the victory. Oh, I hate when people do that. I do what I want, says Freddy. Don't leave, don't leave, don't leave, don't leave, Freddy. I hate when people do that. <laughs> I hate when people give MMR, man. People are like, oh, isn't it nice, though? I'm like, it's not nice. You're inflating your opponent's rank. You're feeding into their delusion of where they are on the ladder. Right? <laughs> There's only one way. That's the Florencio way. You take their points and you fucking school them. You make them feel bad so they get motivated to play better. Whereas if you give them a free win, they didn't earn that. No, I would never disrespect someone by giving them a free win. Even if they ask for it, just because they've disrespected themselves doesn't mean I would disrespect them. You know, I I have respect even for those who have no respect for themselves. <laughs> so good on you, Freddy. Gets the victory there. Kairos does tap out. And uh, what a bizarre series of games. Thank you, everyone, for hanging out. We really appreciate the love, especially those of you who've been supporting us over on Patreon please if you guys are enjoying the channel do check it out we've got some really cool rewards up there uh, early access to some of the videos you can join in with me bacon arcade streams on that tier and a bunch of other cool little details replay packs and the like so thank you everyone for hanging out we really appreciate the support we'll see you in the next episode of icast your freaking awesome replays goodbye and good night